Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ryan here, and today we're gonna to be looking at the Aura Ring. So I've been using the Aura Ring on a daily basis for the last year, and it's been an interesting experience. Uh, part of the reason I first got onto it was the interesting relationship between HRV and adaption to stress. And at the time, this was the only device that seemed to measure that particularly overnight. So today, a year later, in 2021, I thought I'd look at my review, my opinion of it over the last year, um, the pros, the cons, if it's worth the costly price tag, and then of course, if it's something that I'd suggest you have a look at. So the Aura Ring is primarily geared at sleep. Um, it's not an activity tracker. And a lot of people might buy it with that in mind, thinking that this is gonna track how many steps they take, their kilometers, their, their resting heart rate, or their activity heart rate. Uh, but just a heads up, it doesn't tend to do that. It does track your sleep extremely well. However, activity during the day really is limited to essentially a step counter, and it doesn't give you a live reading of your heart rate at the time. So if you're looking for something like that, I'd suggest looking at another product uh, such as maybe an Apple Watch. Um, there's different bands that you can wear, Fitbit, Garmin, things like that are, are probably more suited to the activity tracking market. Where the Aura Ring stands out though is in its ability to track different cycles of sleep, looking at things from temperature, resting heart rate, heart rate variability, even breathing rate, which is, is quite phenomenal. And it puts all these through its algorithm to determine the quality of sleep you've had, um, if you've had enough rest, recommends things like when you should go to sleep, when you should wake up, and it also gives you a heads up if your body's looking like it's run down. And I've got a great example of this only a few weeks back. I got rather unwell with a type of cold, and no, it wasn't coronavirus, thankfully, but what happened in the preceding days before I actually started to develop symptoms was my aura ring was starting to let me know on my, my phone app that, hey, your heart rate's elevated, your temperature's elevated, your breathing rate's elevated, better take it easy because it looks like your body's under some stress. And I thought, oh well, uh, it has been pretty stressful, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, that happened for two or three days in a row um, to the point on the Thursday of the week, I actually woke up quite unwell, had to take a couple of days off work. So it does give you, I guess, really good accurate feedback of different thing, things in your physiology before you'd even realize that they're changing, which is quite phenomenal. Where it really benefits though, I think is in motivating you to develop healthy behaviors to get better rest at night. And you can really, I guess, hack your own physiology with testing out different things that might work for you better. So for instance, HRV, essentially the higher it is in a, a simplistic term, the better. Really low HRV is being linked to uh, poor adaptability distresses. So someone in a coma, for instance, will have a very low heart rate variability, whereas an elite athlete will tend to have a higher heart rate variability. The way that you can change this though is by different habits. So exercising regularly, eating well, eating at certain times, and stress management. And you can test this on yourself and see what tends to work best for you. So for instance, if you have alcohol just before bedtime, you'll find this lowers your HIV and you don't get as good quality rest. Same with caffeine before bed. Uh, going to bed at a certain time of night tends to work better for some people. And then even things like blue light before you go to bed has a dramatic influence on how well you sleep and how quickly you drop into deep sleep where heart rate variability tends to increase. So I gave some, some really great metrics and I'll show you um, on the app here. But we start to see that with these changes um, and you're measuring them, you can really get detailed understanding as to what is normal for you and then how to change these metrics so you can get better quality sleep at night and wake up feeling more refreshed. So obviously the time you're asleep is a big factor. And one thing that you'll start to realize as you has, have this app is that we actually are awake a fair bit of the night, whether it's rolling in bed, uh, drifting in and out of different sleep cycles. So we have our measurement here that you can see, which is the awake measurement. Then we have our light sleep, which we tend to, to I guess, sleep predominantly in. Then we have our REM, which is when we're dreaming. And then our deepest sleep, a very healthy young individual is probably gonna sleep around two hours a night in terms of the deep sleep cycle. Whereas as we age, we actually tend to lose the amount of deep sleep we have. And that's often why we see our elderly uh, family members or friends having lots of day sleeps because they're needing to recharge the batteries a bit more often.
So as you can look through uh, this app, you can actually see over time the changes that occur with your sleep patterns. And if you're having a great run, you'll start to see your scores going up. If it's not a great run, you'll start to see your scores a bit lower. And you can see cycles of when you're doing really, really well and these scores improving in how you feel. And then of course, when you're unwell or you're not sleeping well or stress is high, you see these scores decrease. So it's a great motivator if you're looking to get better sleep, you can sort of use this tracking as a, a gauge of how well you're doing these good habits to get better health and better sleep. And then of course, aiming to do that more often. All right, so let's actually have a look at this ring and see the condition a year later and see how it's holding up. Okay, so it's just coming off my finger here. And the great thing about these rings is when you purchase them, you get given a kit that's sent first to help you size in the ring. So that you wear a little black band around your finger first for a week, and then you determine which size is gonna work best for you. I was pretty confident I figured out my size within only a couple of days and I sent my order through for my ring, uh, but up to you. So as you can see, a year later, pretty good nick still. It's titanium, so it's quite light, but you can see there's very mild scratches and it's really not too bad, still quite shiny, which is great. And as you can see, the design of the aura ring has these sensors on the inside and I'm quite amazed they can fit a battery, different sensors, memory, all in this very lightweight ring. It fits quite well. You don't actually feel these bumps because they sit on the soft underside of your finger. So it just slides on quite easily. It is, I guess, a, a thicker than normal ring, so it does have a bit of bulk to it. Um, I'm a fan of not having to wear things on my wrists. I'm a chiropractor and often these things can get in the way when I'm doing certain treatments. Whereas the ring seems a bit more minimalist and doesn't quite get in the way, but it is, a lot of people ask, oh, you got a new wedding band um, because it is so shiny and it does stick out a bit more. But if that's not too much of a, a concern, then that's fine. The only thing is, I, as you can see, my fingers are quite thin and it doesn't fully let my fingers close. Not that I've ever noticed it, but I imagine if you're maybe a pianist or maybe playing some musical instruments, it might, might impede that. Um, but otherwise, quite stylish. There's two options that you can get for this ring. I've got the flat top, as you can see, but you can get one that peaks at the top as well. Not quite as much as my fingers showing, but I'll show you a picture in this video. So aesthetic wise, I think it works. You can get it in a matte black or a rose gold as well. Um, but I chose a silver just so it was a similar one to my wedding band, it wasn't too different. So in terms of what this is measuring during the day, uh, it measures things like your activity levels, how much energy you've used, so your caloric expenditure, how many steps you've taken. It also measures nap times. And I found that quite interesting because that's a new thing. Whereas uh, usually if you're inactive and you're not moving, you just stay inactive if you had a nap. However, it's actually figured out how now to detect when you're napping, which I thought was pretty cool. At night time, it's measuring a few more things. And this is where it's measuring, you know, things like your resting heart rate, your HRV, your heart rate variability, your respiratory rate, body temp, the, the different cycles of sleep, if you're moving at night time, and then it gives you that overall score of your sleep time and quality. So it's touted as having a seven day battery life. Um, it's waterproof, so you can wear this in the shower, which I thought is great. You don't need to worry about having to take it off. Really, the only time you need to take it off is to charge it. I have heard from a few sources that uh, down the track, these batteries do deteriorate. They don't seem to hold their charge as well. Aura Ring suggests uh, on their website, you can have a seven day charge. I've found it probably sits at about more the five day charge. However, over the last year, I haven't seen that drop off. It does give you a warning on the app as to if your battery level is getting low and it's time to charge it. But it seems to be, even, even regarding temperatures, it doesn't seem to change, it's about five days. Okay, so in the app, we're just loading it up now. We get an idea of, uh, I guess this is like the dashboard, essentially how we've gone over the last couple of nights. And you can scroll through all your days. Now you'll see a lot of my sco scores are around that 75 mark. Every now and then I'll get an 80, which is a great sleep. And then it even gives you weekly reports where you can see essentially how you're going from week to week, which I think is pretty cool. You can see my readiness score is quite low. I think that was when I was a little unwell and then it's going up again. Unfortunately, my sleep is probably not as good, not 
not necessarily because I'm not getting great sleep, just simply because I've got two under four and they do tend to wake up a little bit at night and wake us up, although they are getting better. And then if you look back through the months, you can actually see where there's crowns there when you're winning. That's when you're above 80 and that's really good. That's what you want to aim for. So let's, let's dive deep and we'll go to um, this day here. So when you click on your readiness, you can get a bit of a, I guess, a look at what's been happening and you can see my rest, resting rate, heart rate was a little bit lower, uh, which as you can see, the sleep was dropping down there. There is a heap you can go into here with understanding what all this means. And there is, I guess, ideal heart rate curves and things. You usually want to see the, the lowest point dip right in the middle of the night because that's when you should be in your deeper sleep and then you're unwinding and waking up as you come in the morning rather than dropping down. That probably tells me that I needed more rest and I didn't get enough. Uh, and you can really go down the rabbit hole with understanding all this. But it then gives you the, I guess, the the, the summary of how we're, how we're tracking. Then we can click on readiness and we can then see our general readiness across the board and we can scroll through and see how it's all tracking. It gives you your resting heart rate, heart rate variability, your body temp, your respiratory rate. Um, and I, I think the way they track that is when we breathe in and out, our heart rate will increase and decrease. And it's measuring that, I guess, instantaneously to check how we're, we're going. And then it can give you an ideal. And you can see my resting heart rate can get as low as 52. Uh, I guess historically, but it has been a little bit higher. And this obviously is going to fluctuate depending on if you've eaten too late, uh, if you're stressed, if you need to recover, you're underwell, whatever it might be. And then it gives you, I guess, all your, your indexes through here. And then you can see how it's tracked through the night. And as you can see, my heart rate here was quite high. My HIV was low. This is on the back of being unwell, as I was talking about. I usually get up around the, the 40 to 50 mark, generally. Then if we go into sleep, we can see, uh, I guess, tracking how your sleep has been. And where these gaps are, that's where I've forgotten to charge it and it's not worked. So we have a few dips here and there. Um, interestingly, I was in bed for eight hours, but I only got six hours, nine minutes sleep, which you'll find as you start to track this, that you do sleep a lot less than you think you do. Uh, that's actually not too bad, about 75 to 80% efficiency. It says I should sleep longer, which I agree. Uh, I would want to sleep nine, seven to nine hours. Efficiency wasn't too bad, but I didn't get enough REM sleep and I was restless. Deep sleep was slightly less than usual. I can usually get up to two hours. And latency is a measurement of how long it takes you to get to sleep. This gives you then an indication of how you slept through the night. Um, I spent a lot of time in light sleep that night. So quite interesting, uh, but I didn't wake up too much, which is good. And then of course it gives you your heart rate measurements and your HRV again. Your activity levels do get tracked over time. You can really see where you've been able to get out and exercise, those white bars. Um, went for a, a nice big run there, mowed the lawn the next day. Um, unfortunately, when I'm at work, there is a bit of movement. I'm walking the equivalent of six kilometers, uh, but it's nowhere near enough to keep your activity up. This morning I've been for a run, so already my step rate is going to be better. But you'll see, um, obviously, if you're moving a bit more, you'll have more of those high scores, whereas I've been pretty bad since, well, this year. Here's a bit better. This is a bit more active regularly, uh, obviously doing a lot better there, and you start to see those scores increase. And with that, you'll start to see heart rate drop, uh, redness improve. Didn't sleep as well there, but you'll tend to find the more activity you do and the better you perform during the day will, uh, will directly affect how you sleep as well. I think the, the con of this device though is that we, we are over analyzing almost everything in our lives. We've got trackers for everything, whether it's how many steps we've taken, how we're sleeping at night, uh, how much activity we're doing, our heart rate, blood pressure, all this sort of stuff throughout the day. And sometimes it just gets a bit too intense to track all this stuff and take too much out of it. Because sometimes we might have a poor sleep, but we're still, we're still healthy, we're still gonna function fine during the day. But if you wake up every single day and you're checking, oh, how do I sleep? How do I go? And you didn't have a great sleep, even though you feel good, it might actually then psychologically make you feel not as good. And so that's something I found that I've had to do differently is actually check the scores and the, the measurements at the end of the day, uh, rather than when I first wake up. So I don't let it influence the way my day is going ahead, but I can still get that information over time as to um, if I need more rest, if I need to take it easy, and then go to bed a bit earlier, for instance. 
Now let's talk about the price tag. The device is expensive. It's $400 Australian. It's about 300 US um, at the time of making this video. And the question is raised, is it worth it? Because when we start to look at different tracking technology, we've got watches that do a whole lot more than just track things. We've got Fitbits and Garmin's and Apple Watches. And sure, their price might be a little bit higher, but their functionality is also a lot higher. So I think in terms of making it worth it, I'd say no. I, I don't think it's changed my life that much that I'd say, yes, go out and get it. It's... It's a great idea if you're really looking to really up your level of sleep and enhance it. But for what it is, yes, it's very clever. There's a great technology in it. I just think that I think the, the value that I get out of it is probably, I'd say, half that. I'd be probably have a bit more happy to pay a couple hundred dollars rather than $400 for it. That being said, it's been a, an interesting experiment. I'll keep using it. And there is constant firmware updates. So I'm sure there'll be more and more features that then come out over time that really enhance this device and allow it to work even better. But I think at the end of the day, it really does depend on how much you value enhancing your sleep. Um, obviously I value it a lot, but I think if I was just to simply apply those healthy habits without having a measurement tool to make sure I'm doing it, I'd probably still get that same result. So I think my final recommendations on this ring, if you're really interested in how you sleep, changing how you sleep, developing habits, to change those sleep behaviors and then you want to track it then this is a great device for you if you're looking for more of a tracking device in terms of activity levels no it's not the device for you for me personally i think it's been a a, a really interesting year tracking sleep and tracking behaviors and i have actually changed different behaviors to get a better sleep at night things like going to bed at a, a same time each night uh, getting up at the same time in the morning, not having blue light on before I go to bed, as well as not having alcohol at dinner time. And these have improved my sleep. However, for the $400 price tag, I guess I probably wouldn't have changed those behaviors unless I was tracking it. But I find it hard to justify if you're just interested. I think unless you're getting serious on really wanting to change, change your health, change how you sleep, and then understand how you can change those things by tracking it, it's hard to justify that price tag. So I look forward to Aura Ring becoming more affordable as more people, I guess, take it up and it becomes a bit more of a technology that's mass produced so it's not as pricey. Um, however, at this stage, I think the takeaway is really healthy behaviors change your health. And if you can instill these, whether you're tracking it or not, you're gonna get better outcomes. So the hot tips, I guess, from what I learned over this last year were Eliminate blue light before you sleep, no alcohol before bed, go to bed and wake up at a consistent time. And even if you're following those simple tips, you'll find that that should lead to better sleep, better outcomes in terms of how you wake up and ultimately better health as well. Mm -hmm.